watching and recording behavior. Hello. In this video, we are going to review strategies for watching and recording children's behavior. Doing this allows us to determine whether children are making progress and to understand the particular circumstances that may be affecting their behavior. Watching and recording behavior objectively can be challenging because it requires us to step back from situations and observe what is occurring with as little judgment as possible. The first step is to define a child's behaviors of concern. These may be skills we want to see a child use better, more often, or with greater consistency, such as participating in daily activities or communicating their needs. All right, what are you going to do today? Or they may be behaviors we would like a child to stop or decrease, such as tantrums. We must decide which behaviors are most important and will be the best indicators of positive change over time. When deciding which behaviors to watch and record, we want to consider whether the behaviors affect the child's health and safety, ability to communicate, self-regulation and control, participation in valued routines, level of independence, inclusion in the community, interactions, and relationships. Once we've determined which behaviors are of greatest concern, we need to define those behaviors in clear, concise, and observable terms. Clear means that the child's behavior would be obvious to anyone observing, even someone who doesn't know the child. Concise means that it is described in as few words as possible. Observable means the behavior is described in terms of exactly what the child says or does. In defining behavior, we want to avoid labels and assumptions, just focusing on the facts. I know. I know, but we need to take it. No. No. In this video, the boy is having what we might call a tantrum. We would probably define it as two or more of the following behaviors, hitting with hand or objects, making spitting sounds, and screaming. Once we have clear, concise, and observable definitions of our behaviors of concern, we can decide how we want to record the behavior. We record behavior either to track progress or to better understand the patterns surrounding our children's behavior. We will start by describing ways to track behavior. Tracking behavior allows us to determine changes occurring over time. It helps us decide whether behavior is increasing, decreasing, or staying stable. We can track behavior by counting, timing, or rating it. When we count behavior, we simply record how many times it occurs in a particular time period. We can do this by making marks on a sheet of paper, tapping an electronic device, or using other simple techniques to capture its frequency. Counting works well for most behaviors that tend to stand alone, such as asking for items, following directions, or problem behavior such as striking people or objects. Here is an example of a counting record. When we time behavior, we use a watch or a timer to track how long it takes from when the behavior begins to when it ends and jot down the total time for each incidence of behavior. Timing is useful when a behavior tends to go on for a while. Examples of behavior we may want to capture with timing could include things like the length of time a child participates in an activity or the length of problem behavior such as screaming. Here is an example of a timing record. When we rate behavior, we use a simple scale that indicates different levels of the behavior. The scale, for example, could be from poor to excellent or mild to severe. Ratings are helpful when we're concerned about how well a child is doing or how serious a behavior is. We can also use number ratings to estimate the frequency of behavior.
By doing this, we do not have to count every single time a behavior occurs. Just make our best guess. Here is an example of how to rate behavior. Now let's watch some videos and practice each of the types of recording, counting, timing, and rating. In this video, count how many times the little girl takes bites of food. Is that hot? Oh, it's good. You eat your spinach too. Did you count three bites? How many times do you see the boy push, slam, or throw his toys? Do you want to I know what you're going to do. Yeah, you're going to throw things. Okay. What do you want to bring? It looked like four to me. In this video, time how long the boy remains with his parent. Start timing when she begins talking and stop when he moves away. So we're done with the mirror. So go ahead and erase it. Oh, and what is the last thing we're going to do? Do you know what that says? What does that say? Oh, you want to swing? I timed about 10 seconds. In the following videos, we are going to rate cooperation with meals. Let's rate zero if the child does not remain at the table. One, if she resists, cries, or is aggressive and does not eat. Two, if she is somewhat cooperative, but not eating. And three, if she's fully engaged in eating and behaving appropriately. Uh -uh. How would you rate this child's eating? I would say a one. Now how about this girl? I would rate her behavior a three. Sometimes it's not possible to record every incident of behavior, given how busy our lives are or how often our children's behavior occurs. In these situations, we can estimate how often behavior occurs by using a rating strategy like I described before. We can also pick certain routines or times of day and only record or sample during those periods. Sampling allows us to capture our children's behavior during the most important situations without making recording too difficult or time consuming. For example, we might rate how well our children participate during their extracurricular activities, record how many different foods they eat during dinner, or keep a running list of words used during playtime. We might break the day into one to two hour intervals and simply record whether behaviors of concern, such as yelling or slamming, occurred at all during the interval. Here's an example of an interval recording. When we track behavior on an ongoing and consistent basis, we're able to see trends, objectively evaluating whether a child's behavior is increasing, decreasing, or remaining at the same level. Creating visual displays such as graphs makes this even easier. See how exciting it is to see progress in this way? Tracking helps us evaluate our children's progress, but does not provide much insight into why our children are behaving the way they are. There's another type of recording that helps us understand the possible motivations of children's behavior. In the remainder of this video, we are going to focus on something called ABC recording. The A stands for antecedent, or what happens before the behavior. The B stands for behavior, and the C stands for consequences, the results a child's behavior produces. In ABC recording, we capture not only what our children are saying or doing, but also the circumstances that surround the behavior and keep it going. As in other types of recording, it's important we be as clear and objective as possible, describing only what occurs, not what we assume may be happening. We detail what occurred before the child's behavior, including what time it was, where it happened, who was present, and what exactly occurred that set the stage for the behavior. We also describe what happened after the child's behavior. If the behavior itself produced certain consequences, such as items being rearranged or broken, as well as the reactions of others in response to the behavior. Let's watch some footage of behavior and see how ABC recording works. Sit. Look. 
You should eat a piece of toast. You want to sit there instead? Eat toast. Hungry? Hungry? And feet rub. The mother asks the girl to come to eat. Instead, she drops down on the chair and lifts her feet. Her mother rubs them and talks with her. No! Oh, it's time. No! It, but it's time. No! It's time. We need to do. No! Yes. Yes. Remember? Remember? I know. I know, but we need to take it. No. No. The mother uses a card to tell her son it's time to put things away and leave. As soon as he sees the card, he begins yelling no and moves away, taking the bubble wand with him. She repeats the instruction, and he continues saying no and screaming. When she approaches him to take the wand, he hits her and spits, further delaying giving up the wand. It's important to recognize that behavior occurs in chains, where a consequence, such as someone's reaction to the behavior, leads to the next behavior. A parent, for example, may say, stop that, and a child may respond by either stopping the behavior, doing it again, or repeating the behavior with even greater intensity. It's also important to understand that parent behavior also has antecedents and consequences that affect it. We each have certain triggers that will get us to react and how our child responds to our reaction will influence how we handle their behavior in the future. For example, if a child escalates their behavior when we try to set a particular limit, we may be hesitant to try that again. What is it, honey? I'm lost. I'm lost. Tell me. B, I can't understand when you're crying. What is it you want? Hey. You don't, you wanted your snack. Come here, what's the matter? What is it? What do you want? What is it you need? You're pointing to generic stuff. Oh, tears are bugging your eyes, huh? You see how the little boy's becoming increasingly upset, crying loudly. His mother tries to figure out what's wrong but then takes him out of the chair and holds him. He immediately stops crying. The mother's consequence of removing him from the chair is that he stops crying. Recording ABC patterns that surround behavior helps us step back and see things more objectively. We can begin to understand the patterns that affect our children's behavior, as well as how our behavior influences our children.